Hey guys, so today I'm on a quest. A quest to get my swamp back. I'm on a quest to figure out what the best budget gaming GPU is right now in 2023. And I am willing to make some sacrifices to figure out which GPU is the best budget GPU. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Actually, I think I already found it. I've been testing the Intel Arc A750. Right now, it's priced at 229, like right now. Like if you don't go to Best Buy right now, I spoke to Mr. Buy himself. He said, if you don't go right now, it's not gonna be that price. Just kidding, I don't have insider knowledge at Best Buy anymore. I was pretty close to Corey Berry. I was the CEO of Best Buy. Just kidding, we weren't. Corey Berry sounds like a fake name. Kind of like a str So I'm gonna benchmark it, I'm gonna stress test it, I'm gonna game on it. I'm gonna compare it to other GPUs that I think are in the same ballpark as this GPU. And we'll see if the Intel Arc A750 is the best budget gaming GPU right now. It's gonna be pretty sicko mode. So before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. All right, let's get to it. All right, first off, let's talk about the GPU. Just by looking at it, it's pretty simple, especially in the front. I think the back side looks way cooler. I think the limited edition makes it look cooler. I don't think it's super limited, but whatever. But overall, it's a very minimalistic yet sleek design. Now, I don't think it's the best looking GPU. I think some of the best looking GPUs are the 20 series founders editions, as well as the 30 series founders editions. I just think those are the nicest GPUs in my opinion. Now in 2023, this GPU isn't the newest. It did come out in quarter three of 2022. It's currently priced at $199, has a GPU clock speed of 2050 megahertz, eight gigs of GDDR6 RAM, uses about 225 watts of power, and has about 28X cores. I'm not sure how that compares to CUDA cores. Maybe we'll find out later. It does support ray tracing, so it's capable of giving you super realistic reflections. 448X vector engines, as well as Intel X Matrix extension engines. So there's a total of 896 engines in this GPU, apparently, according to Intel. I don't know where they put them, but they're in there. And now if you're wanting to compare this GPU to an NVIDIA GPU that's comparable, it would probably be the 3060. Now I had two 3060s when they first came out, but they're trash. Don't get upset if you have a 3060 and I just call the GPU trash. I still love you. So 3060 prices kind of hover between 340 to $400. At the time, I already had a 3060 Ti, so when I compared it to my 3060 Ti, it was pretty trash. So I was kind of disappointed. I even had a 2060 Super that outperformed the 3060 when I tested it in gaming and benchmarks and pretty much every category. It's still a good card. It's just if you're comparing to the cards I have, they're trash. If I'm looking at AMD or NVIDIA GPUs, NVIDIA has the 1660 Super, trash. The 1660 Ti, trash. The 3050, trash. And then you have the 3060, which is decent. The thing is it's priced way higher than the A750, trash. Now AMD has the 6500 XT, trash. Has the 6600, trash. The 6650 XT, it's actually a decent GPU. Although during my benchmarks, the A750 still outperformed it in all the GPU tests. Now I did use a different CPU, but if you look at just the GPU scores, it outperforms it in every test that I ran. Since I no longer have those 3060s, I'm just gonna compare it to a 2060 Super, a better 3060. I'm going to be throwing in the Corsair 4000D airflow case. And I have it equipped with six Corsair QL fans, which look pretty sickle mode. There's so many RGBs on each fan. And I'm using a new cooler I just got. It's the H150i Elite LCD XT. I don't know what the XT stands for, extra testicles? I don't know. Like I said, we're gonna be pairing it to an Intel processor. Because apparently, if you pair this Intel GPU with an AMD GPU, they blow up. I don't know what happens, I haven't tried it, so we'll figure it out later. So I'm gonna plug the GPU in directly to the motherboard while the computer's on. Just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. Honestly, the 3060, I think it's just overpriced for what you get. Anytime I recommended a budget-friendly build, I usually recommended the 6600 XT. It was priced lower, you got very similar, if not better performance. 
and I would recommend an AMD CPU anyways, like that pink build that I built for my friend. It's exactly what happened. And I think the 2060 Super Founders Edition looks way more sick of mode than any 3060 out there, except maybe the Aorus one. But if you're gonna go with that, might as well just do the 3060 Ti, because that's a way better GPU. Now, the first test that I actually ran was actually a stress test. It was that Fermark test on the Intel A750. I got a high temp of 83 degrees Celsius, which isn't the worst, but it also isn't the best. Anything in the 80s is kind of, you know, eh. I think compared to the 2060 Super, the max temp I got on that was 76 degrees, which is much lower. I've never had heat issues with the 2060 Super Founders Edition. 83 degrees Celsius isn't gonna melt your face off or make your ball sweat. Now the next test I ran were benchmarks. I ran 3D benchmarks. I ran three tests for the Firestrike Extreme benchmark. We're only looking at the graphics test here. The Intel A750 beats out the 2060 Super as well as the 6650 XT. Moving on to the Time Spy benchmark, the A750 beats out the 2060 Super and the 6650 XT as well. And it looks like we're starting to see a pattern here. The final 3D Mark benchmark that I ran was the Speedway test. It's strictly a GPU test. The A750 pretty much bends the other cards over and beats it pretty easy. The next test I ran was the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. I ran it at 1080p ultra quality with ray tracing on. And you could say it ran pretty decent. Everything looked smooth, there was no stuttering. Obviously it's not gonna play like a 3080, but it did the job and gave us an average FPS of 65 frames per second, which is pretty all right. And then I ran the Cyberpunk benchmark. I have the lowest ray tracing settings on at 1080p, and this game still looked beautiful. There was no complaints, and I ended up getting an average FPS of 73 FPS. That's a pretty healthy number, especially for Cyberpunk. With these tests, I ran them all in 1080p just because these aren't high-end GPUs. The only game I ran to 1440p was GTA V because it is an older game. So at 1440p, I wasn't able to get 144 frames per second at the highest settings. So right now I'm medium to high settings and it still looks good. It, some of the textures just don't look as sharp but it's definitely an enjoyable and playable experience. The FPS was consistently over 144 frames per second, which it should be for being an older game, almost 11 years old. So after all those tests, what does this all mean? Overall, the Intel GPU outperformed the 2060 Super in pretty much every category, in gaming and benchmarks. The only thing in the stress test, it did get a little warmer, but honestly, it's not a big deal. Really, there's nothing like this GPU in this price range that'll even compete. For the money, it's the best budget GPU that you can get right now, 2023. The Intel A750 has definitely surprised me. There is a couple things that I didn't like. The software, how would you say it? You can tell that AMD and Nvidia have been making their GPUs longer because the software for the Intel GPUs, I feel like isn't at the level of the AMD or Nvidia GPUs. You know, as long as they keep producing them, I'm sure, what's the word? More, not more compatible. I guess more compatible so that the Intel GPUs are better optimized for their softwares or their games. And that was just one thing I saw. It's not a deal breaker, but overall, I really like the GPU. I would definitely recommend it. Now, I don't know how reliable they are. I've only had it a couple days, but so far, nothing is sticking out to me that's telling me that this GPU sucks. I hope it doesn't suck. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And please like and subscribe if you like this content. I strive to make each video I put out more sicko mode than the last. Like always, hope you have a sicko mode day.